This video is on Magnolia grandiflora, Southern Magnolia or Bull Bay. It's in the Magnolia AC family, the Magnolia family. The specific epithet grandiflora means large flowered. And the fruit type is an aggregate of follicles. So this tree grows naturally in our lower coastal plain and along the Gulf Coast states. But it is widely planted and it has been naturalized and grows in our woods here as an understory tree. The wood is used for crates and pallets and boxes. It's fairly low in value. The seeds are eaten by songbirds and small mammals. And this evergreen foliage provides winter cover for various wildlife species. And again, I'll emphasize that this is a very common landscaping plant. So you'll see this planted all over the place. It's very common, especially here in the south. Obviously, it's got this really dark, evergreen, attractive foliage. And it's got those large white flowers early in summer that are really attractive, an attractive trait for landscapers as well. So we'll, to ID this plant, we'll start with the leaves. So you can see just how they're pretty big and they're alternately arranged on the stem. They're evergreen, so they do, this is not a deciduous plant. It keeps these dark evergreen leaves all year round. The margin is entire. The leaves are mostly elliptical in shape. They're pretty elongated though. And they've got this real prominent yellow mid vein, especially on these cultivars. Now the most important thing for most of our planted Southern Magnolias here is this underleaf. So check out this distinctive reddish brown and it's fuzzy too. This nice pubescent reddish brown underleaf. Now this is characteristic of most of our varieties of Southern Magnolia, but in the wild, they don't have this trait. We're gonna look at a wild one here shortly, but most of our planted magnol Southern Magnolias are gonna have this distinctive reddish brown underleaf and that's variable. So this one is pretty, pretty dark reddish brown, but other varieties. So I took this leaf off a different variety nearby and look just how different these two shades of reddish brown are. We've got this darker one and the lighter one too. So it's variable, that amount of reddish fuzziness underneath. And again, the wild ones don't have this reddish brown fuzzy. They're just kind of pale green underneath. And we'll look at the wild one later because its form is different as well. But sticking with the twig here, we can see these encircling stipular scars at the leaf node. You see these lines that encircle these scars that encircle the twig entirely. There's one right here, another one here, and further down here. And this is a characteristic of the Magnolia family. So we saw a tulip tree also has these encircling stipular scars. And the bud, like our other Magnolias, is gonna be really big and pointed. And this one's really fuzzy too. So that big pointy fuzzy bud and the twigs and bud are pretty reddish brown on this cultivated variety here. Now the fruit is an aggregate of follicles. So it looks really distinctive. So here's the fruit. This one's not ripe yet. It's still kind of greenish, but when it's ripe, it'll be dark grayish brown. And then, so these are, this is an aggregate of follicles, right? So. Each of these is a follicle. So we got a follicle here, a follicle here, another here. And you can see that seam that will split open when it's mature and it'll reveal a dark red seed and a really distinctive fruit there. So all of our magnolias have a really similar fruit like this. But the important thing about Southern Magnolia fruit is it's pretty big. So there it is in my hand. It's pretty big sized fruit. And it's also real fuzzy. So if we get in here close, you can see the pubescence on all of these follicles. That's really important because our other magnolias we learned in this class are not pubescent. So it's a really important character because this is a tree you need to know by fruit alone as well as just the whole plant in general. So looking at the bark here, the bark is pretty dark gray, fairly smooth, but we're gonna have those a few horizontal, or really many horizontal small whitish lenticels all on the bark and along the trunk too or the branches rather. So the big keys for ID of this species, these big, dark, simple alternate evergreen leaves. And again, that rusty pubescence underneath them is, on, is present on many of the varieties of Southern Magnolia. So this again is a planted cultivar here on campus, but we're gonna take a look at a wild one in our woods here in the Piedmont, North Carolina in the next part of this video coming up right now. All right, so now we're looking at a wild Southern Magnolia 
here at Lake Johnson, just south of campus. So this is what the species would look like in its native range. Remember, it's native to our Gulf or our coastal plain and along the Gulf Coast. So you've still got these long, alternate evergreen leaves, really dark green, thick to the touch. But the underside, remember on those cultivars and varieties that are planted on campus, they have that nice dark reddish brown underleaf. But this underleaf is just this light green, slightly fuzzy, not as extensively fuzzy as those planted cultivars are. Just a light green underleaf. This is what the wild southern magnolia looks like, but it's still got all the characters that we talked about on the um, planted cultivars and varieties on campus. So it's still got that long pointed bud, characteristic of all of our magnolias, and those stipular scars encircling the twig. You can see those. Again, those dark evergreen long leaves, and the bark is this nice, smooth, dark gray with those light lenticels. And the bark can get scaly with age, but this one's just nice and smooth all the way to the base. So this is, again, our wild form of the Southern Magnolia. Remember that pale green underleaf. And then we've got those cultivars we talked about with that dark reddish brown underleaf. That's a lot. A lot of those are what you'll see normally there on campus and planted in landscapes.